Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and welcome to my Wood Elf Guide. Wood Elves are one of the absolute best teams at all TVs and in all formats of Blood Bowl. They're incredible at winning matches, really easy to score quickly with them, really easy to get turn-ups on defence, really easy to attempt to dr turn draws into wins. They're just pretty much fantastic. Their weakness is, of course, that they're armor 7, so you might, you know, they might get beaten up a bit. But that's pretty much their only, their only weakness. Um, let's have a look and see what Cyanide says. One of the swiftest races in the game. Yep, they're very fast. War Dancers on movement 8. Catches on movement 8 with Sprint. Lyman on movement 7. So, and they're all agility force. They're all super, super fast and mobile. You know, catches and War Dancers both start with dodge. Lyman can get it quickly. So, yeah, they're incredibly mobile. As well as just plain fast. The Tree Man is, of course, really slow, but that's okay. War Dancers are exceptional starting players. Yes, they're the best starting players in the game and just pretty much the best players in the game full stop. They're absolutely unbelievable players. Uh, pretty much the best player in the game. Excellent passing game. Not really, but that's not really... A, that's not really true and B, that's not really a strength. I never I never take throwers. You can do, but it, then totally not necessary. Weaknesses, the high price players. Yeah, that's the thing. They, t they tend to take a lot of attrition and then it's not so easy to replace them. And they can end up in a death spiral sometimes. Um, but then they're not super expensive. They can still start with everything they need. So it's not that bad. Most players have little armor. That is the big one. It's very easy to take loads of removals. You know. But the thing is, because they're built and like balanced around that, it's not that much of a disadvantage. You know, like orcs and dwarves have got lots of armor, but they can still just randomly take, you know, two or three cars, and then they're absolutely screwed. Whereas Wood Elves are so good that they can take two or three cars and still be fine. And the best avoid direct confrontation. This isn't particularly true. I guess what it is, is they don't have much natural access to guard. Of course, the tree man can take guard. No one else can take guard. But, like, every team, like, direct confrontation doesn't make sense, right? Every team doesn't want to get blocked. And every team wants to max blocks if it can. So... Like every, this is just a non a nonsense. But yeah, they're, they're really good. They're really good. Anyway, let's have a look at the players. Okay, let's start with the tree man. He's a hundred and twenty thousand gold to buy. He's only got strength access, but I mean he's really good. Two six one ten. He's got the biggest thing he's got wrong with him is take root. So on a one, you take root every time you declare an action, and you can't move at all. That's really bad. Like, it's a really, really bad trait to have. Um, and he's got Lorna, of course, because he's a big guy. But the the thing is, you can still use him as a pivot. You can still move around him after he takes root. You can try to activate him as little as possible and just have him there as, like, a strength six wall. Um, the, the other really bad thing about him is the movement, too. He doesn't automatically stand up. He has to roll four plus to stand up. So maybe that's the worst thing about him. But those two things about him are terrible. Um, obviously, you can't do anything about the take route. You can take plus movement for him, which solves his problem perfectly. That's really good to get. Um, he starts with stand firm and mighty blows. So you can't push him around at all. He's got strong arm, which is pretty much just for throw teammate, which he can't do on high elves, uh, wood elves. Oh dear, never mind. And he's got thick skull, keeps him on the field a bit longer. So he's got like he's got a lot of skills. The only two normal skills he really wants are guard and grab. I tend to go guard first, some people go grab first to try and help with one turns. On a double roll, you're looking at block or jump up. Both have got pros and cons. I really like jump up because I hate the four plus stand up. Of course, with block, you get knocked down slightly less and you'll get more knockdowns and less turnovers with him, stuff like that. So block's really good, but I, I love jump up. Um, the thing is, as well, if you go block, you might get plus movement later. And if you've already got plus movement, then block is the obvious choice. You can take pro. Pro gives you a shot to re-rolling the take route. So pro's pretty decent. If he rolls movement, I would absolutely take movement. I would not take strength or agility or armor, so... Yeah, they're a good they're a good player, and it's weird because like you know, Wood Elves are this super fast, crazy team, and then they've got like a super strong guy that can that can just dominate the LOS and stuff, and like people can put in loads of plays to hit him, and you know, really sacrifice the drive. The twat magnet he is often called. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty much he can be he can be an incredible player. Sometimes he's rubbish. In some matches, he can be absolutely terrible. But he, he does protect your elves, so he's better in like a CCL environment where 
you know, he helps with the taking attrition aspect. Um, but he can be used in, in, in every format. Here's the War Dancer. This is the best player in Blood Bowl. There are, you do get two of them for 120,000 each. And they start off as just a complete Finnish player. 8, 3, 4, 7, block, dodge, leap. Like, just a completely incredible player. Like, they're finished when you buy them. They are just incredible. <laughs> like, this is a this is like a high elf catcher with three skills. Like, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. What an insane player. General and agility. Um, so, basically, what you want to do is you want to take tackle and strip ball. Pretty much there, there you go to. In, in something like Naf, you'll, you'll usually see a tackle dancer and a strip dancer. In in like a CCL kind of format, I like to give the first one strip ball and the second one tackle, usually. It does depend though. The strip ball has a, has a lot more going for it early on where less people have sure hands, like for instance Chaos. Whereas at higher TV, every team tends to get sure hands somewhere. So it does lose a bit of utility as, it, as you go up in TV. Also, by going tackle first, this opens you up to rolling Mighty Blow on your second skill, if you get a double. Um, a double, I always like to take Mighty Blow. And then Juggernaut, strangely. Because, you know, you really don't get stuck and have to dodge away and stuff. Like, it's a 1 in 36. The, the dancers are going to be blitzing pretty much every turn for you. Juggernaut guarantees the push and stuff. It's, it's, it's pretty useful. Like, it's not that amazing. But it's kind of useful. But yeah, the main one is Mighty Blow, right? Because you're going to make 16 blocks with this guy every every game. So having Mighty Blow on that is really good. And Mighty Blow Tackle is, of course, a great combination. So, But you do want a strip when you do want a tackler. So yeah, strip ball or tackle is your first skill. And then the other one, if you get normals. And then you're looking at sidestep is a really good one just for protection. Some people like Frenzy on their war dancers. I don't like Frenzy without Strength 4, uh, basically. I, li I like being able to control what they're doing, and I think taking away that control is a bit rubbish. But, you know, like, it, there's certainly, there, there can be times um, that you would want it. But yeah, I think they're the big normals. Also, wrestle. If you t if you get a bunch of normals, then wrestle is pretty good, because you can have wrestle, tackle, strip ball, and then he can be a really good sacker. Um, you know, on half dies or whatever. So yeah, wrestles okay, but that, you'd need a lot of normals to get that. And the, of course, what you're hoping for is stats because they're already starting with. Like you could quite happily just take six stats on a war dancer, and it would be incredible. <laughs> Movement ten, strength five, and agility six. <laughs> it would be absolutely fine, and it would even be fine to like take two armor. Like as much as I would never take armor on them, it would still be fine just because. If all your eggs are in one basket, you might as well make it a bit of a stronger basket. Like, war dancers get fouled a lot. Oh, Fen, sorry, Fen's another decent norm. Um, but yeah, like, you really want stats. Stats are the goal, you know, absolute goal for the for war dancers. But, the, yeah, the, those normal strip ball, tackle, sidestep, mighty blow for your double, and uh, you're laughing. Really, really, just unbelievably good players. And you've got the thrower. So the thrower I rarely take. He is 90k for 7, 3, 4, 7 with pass. So you're paying 20k for pass. He does get passing access though, which means he can take leader on the first skill up. And that's basically why you're taking him is for, for a leader early on. There is also the argument for later on, if you've got something like a 2000 TV Wood Elf team, you might as well have a pass guy to help with the one turn. However, I would rather give shoe hands to a catcher and just use that really. So... It's it's very niche the use of a thrower. Now the thing is, in CCL and that it's only twenty TV, right? So if you think that your player can can deal with twenty k wasted TV, then you know having the luxury of having a pass player is okay. But I don't really think he's necessary, and I don't take him because that could be like a wrestle player for the same TV, and wrestle is infinitely more useful than pass. Um, his normal skills would just be, well, dodge, sure hands, block, or the obvious three, as well as leader. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much all you need. You could get accurate and stuff if you want to throw. Obviously, stats, movement, strength and agility are all good. You can also just, if you roll double, take guard on him, and he can just be like a block, dodge, guard player. But again, I just I just don't like them. Don't take them personally. But, that, you know, they're, they're not terrible. <laughs> right, the catchers... Are, are really good players, 90k. They've got catch, dodge, and sprint, so they are actually really fast. They're essentially about the same speed as a gutter runner, and about the same stat line as a gutter runner, but they do have catch. 
on top, but they're not obviously not actually as fast. Um, they really love getting the movement up and because you know they've already got the sprint and if they get two movement ups they become a natural one turner which is incredible. Uh, strength, I, w I have taken guard instead of strength. Strength isn't that good because you've already got war dancers and everything but like it's okay, you know, it's okay. And if you get strength then you could go wrestle and have like a different kind of sacker to your war dancers or you could just go block show hands with strength three as well, it's fine obviously. Agility is obviously great. Um, the double that I like to give them is guard because they're strength two, so having that super mobile guard is amazing. Um, the first skill is block. I never go wrestle on them really because, again, you've got war dancers for, for the sacking role. With pro elves and high elves, you'd often want wrestle, but when you're strength two, and, and gut runners as well often get a couple of wrestle in, but I think when you've got war dancers which are already built, you know, as amazing ball hawks anyway, you don't really need it. So I, would, I just tend to go block sidestep. On normals and then hope for doubles for guard or stats um, yeah that's it and then of course if you do get movement up then you can go sure feet I don't really like sure feet without a movement up but um, it's you know because just because sidestep so good helps with one turn and everything and your basic lineman is I mean what a player this guy is he's 70k and he's 7347 and he really makes pro elf lineman look bad getting plus movement for 10 and of course, you know, High Elf and Dark Elf linemen are really good, 6348, he trades the armor for a movement. I mean, they just, they, they can let you do so much, They're, they are really good, and that's why I don't take kick. I, I basically hardly ever take kick. A lot of people like taking kick on the first skill on a team. I just find it's not necessary. You will often get good kicks anyway without kick, and uh, I, just, I just don't think it's worth, because the players are so good. Like with a Skaven, a Skaven lineman who's only 7337, getting kick for your four gutter runners to benefit makes a lot of sense. But with this guy getting agility for, you know, really cheap, I just, I would rather make him a good player. So what I like to do is for the first skill, I'll take block if I've got less than four block on the team, just to get like, you know, that early core of block at low TV. In progression, this is. In, in resurrection, I'll go wrestle on them because it lets them do something. And after I've got four block, I'll go wrestle first on everybody. Wrestle's just super good because these guys don't want to, you know, get hit by somebody with block, get both downed, and then get hit again. They just want to go use wrestle, put their opponent on, this, on the ground. Their opponent is probably slower than them because they're movement seven, which is just crazy for a lineman. And then they're free to move next turn and reposition. A lot of people like going dodge first. I do like to go block or wrestle just because the worst matchup that you have and pretty much only bad matchup that you have is dwarves or chorfs, uh, chaos dwarves or dwarves. So I find that wrestle really helps in those matches and block, you know, you, you're not getting to use dodge as much. So that's just a personal thing. I think dodge probably does give more value overall, but I'm okay with losing a little bit of chances versus everybody else to get a bit more of a chances versus the only bad matches. Um, so yes, block or wrestle, then dodge, then sidestep. Those are the only three ones that I care about. You could take kick on the third skill then, it's not terrible, but I do prefer sidestep. And on a double, they tend to take guard because guard on elves is really, really, really good. Uh, I wouldn't mind if the first skill I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate like you know taking mighty blow and then maybe having a mighty blow piling on wood elf. Like it's a bit crazy, but it's something you can do. I think it's generally not worth it, and I think generally mighty blow for the war dancers and these guys just take guard and you know live fast, die young. I don't like stats on them. Funnily enough, this there is an exception. Um, depends on the rest of the team, depends on you know who your project players are, who you can afford to funnel lots of SPP to. It's the, it, there's lots of things going to it. I mean, I would always consider plus strength just because it's, it's so powerful, but of course it could be guard. Um, agility is good if you've got like something like a 14, 15, maybe even 1600 TV team that has got a decent chance of getting wizards. And then having an edge five player, you can just give him blodge as well, right? Sure hands. I had an agility six player once, in fact. And that with plus a wizard is just crazy, right? Because they just dodge in and, and pick the ball up wherever it is. So I, I could see taking agility or strength. I don't like movement or armor on them. I, because Just because wrestle and dodge are just such good skills. And then there's, so there's things like if you roll a double first, then you go guard. Then you can go block and dodge, right? And if I go guard first, then I'll go dodge second because then he's just then he is more useful you know i think if you go guard first then 
dodge before block gets more value. So yeah, that's the lineman. A really good player and sets the mark for the rest of the team. So uh, let's have a look at the different team builds. Okay, so first up we have the two reroll build. This is the build that I've used the most and for a long time it would be the only build I would consider or recommend. It's really good. You've got two rerolls, you've got 11 players, you've got your two best players and a fast player. You know, it gives everything you need. It's pretty nice. I think it's it's good for beginners because it gets you the max amount of rerolls. Essentially, like giving up war dances is non-negotiable. <laughs> gives you a bit of money to save for the apothecary as your first purchase. Then I like to get the third reroll. I really love the freedom of three rerolls. It just lets you it lets you just make plays that you couldn't even try if you only had two. So for that reason, I just love it. Even even if I don't end up using it, it will just make me play my turns differently knowing that I've got that safety net and it will let me push my luck a lot more than if I don't have it so personally I like going for the third reroll first some don't uh, but there you go and my first purchase would probably be the tree man after well after the apothecary and the reroll then the tree man and then start filling out the catches so the problem that it has is that you get your catches pretty late and then so it's harder for them to become stat freaks or you know, guard on the on the catches and stuff. You get better linemen, and uh, you get a more consistent start. Now, what I've been using recently, and I really enjoy, is the one reroll start. This gets you all four catches at the cost of going down to one reroll. But this means that you can you can skill them all up. Gives you much more chances to get plus movement on them, plus agility on them, guard on them. And they, they do, you know, the catches are a bit rubbish with only normals, to be honest. Like, block and sidestep are fine, but it's only two skills. So you'd really like to get doubles on these guys or stats on them. So, And it's still quite powerful. You've still got a reroll. You've got a bit of a safety net. And, yeah, you're just starting with everybody. Very, very mobile as well, right? You've got six dodge players. So that mitigates the reroll a bit as well. Um, of course, they are quite weak. You're looking like a Skaven team with uh, four gut runners. So that is a, that is a bit of a problem. But um, again, I would do the same. I would get the Apothecary first, then go to two re-rolls, and then think about maybe he's adding the Tree Man, and then go to three re-rolls. Or, you know, maybe he's not go with the Tree. I'm, I'm still torn on the, whether to take the Tree ever or not, to be honest, especially with the DACA strategy, or the withdrawn offense, which I'll have to do a, a video about later. Um, that really, really makes the Tree look a bit even worse than he already is. But, I mean, this is this is a fine start, and this is more what I'd be inclined to go with myself in future. So maybe if you're more, a bit more advanced, uh, I think this is quite good. And, and it's just risky, right? It's not even that much harder to play with one reroll, but it's a bit riskier and a bit more payoff in getting the catches skilled quickly. And the final build is the Inarian build, the zero reroll build. Uh, Inarian, who's a pretty famous player in the ball too, loves this build. It's, it's very powerful, right? You get all of your positionals nearly at the start of the team. You've got your tree man there right from the start, and he's got Mighty Blow, so he, like, he is a really good player. It's just that he's variable, and it's a bit weird. But, you know, he's, he's good. Right? He, he can, he's got, he can Mighty Blow people. I'll give you th three wins with three dice Mighty Blow hits and stuff, and he starts getting SPP straight away. Two dancers, of course. The thrower, so the point of the build is that the thrower gets three completions and a touchdown in his first game. And then he takes leader. And then you just have, you know, you've you've got a reroll and you're stable. And if you've got time to restart several times in CCL, this has got a lot of power to it. And you do the same again, you go apothecary, then you add in the couple of rerolls, and then you can add in the fourth catcher. And so this does have kind of the biggest payoff, but it is the riskiest. So, you know, I guess just bear that in mind. But each one has a bit more power than the last depending on how many rerolls you have, which is, I mean, that is what rerolls do, right? They let you trade power for reliability. But I mean, the thing is, I feel like Wood Elves are powerful enough that they don't need that, but it's fair. It, it's also long-term progression. That, that is a factor as well in, in the different builds. And when it comes to star players, this is the one that you want pretty much all of the time, Eldril Sidewinder. He has Hypnotic Gaze, so on a three plus, um, minus tackle zones he can make somebody lose their tackle zone on the opposing team so he can crack open cages and that's amazing he's basically a pro elf catcher he's got nerves of steel he's got dodge he's got pass block so 
yeah, he can. He's only two hundred k. Essentially, you want him plus a wizard a lot of the time if you're down TV. Like the wizard's usually going to be your go-to inducement, but Eldril can just help you do you know crazy things in one turn. Absolutely crazy. Jordel Fresh Breeze. I have taken him before. He is a war dancer with a edge five, so he's a bit more, a bit more rowdy and consistent than Eldril. A lot of the time, Eldril will just use his hypnotic gaze and then be killed. Jordel obviously gives you edge five if you don't have edge five on your team. Having an edge five with a wizard is is a really good combination. They can they're a loud Morg, but I don't think I've ever taken Morg on elves. Dolphar's terrible, Willow's terrible, <laughs> and uh, Zara's good, but. It, like, usually the problem is, if you can afford Zara, you can afford jo Jordel, and Jordel's pretty much just better, in my opinion. But yeah, Eldril's the big one. And that's it, that's uh, that's that's everything for the Wood Elves. So, uh, thanks for watching, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.